the Klamath River. This nearly 300 mile river runs through Oregon and to the Northern California coast. And for the last century, dams have decimated this one's abundant resource and blocked the route of salmon and steelhead. But this isn't a story about the fish. With this next documentary, we learn about the Yurok tribe. This thousand year old community relies on the river for survival, but over the years have learned to be resilient as they aim to restore clean water and food to their community. If you want more about how this documentary was made, stick around to the end where we get a little Q&A with the filmmaker. And now from American Rivers and Swiftwater Films, this is Guardians of the River. Everything around us, it's all tied into this one beautiful place. And it just inspires us to take care of this place. And that ties into our values as indigenous people. If you take care of yourself and make sure yourself is healthy enough to take care of your family and make sure they're taking care of themselves, then it should inspire everybody to take care of the land that we all need. It all starts with being able to catch that fish and bring it home to your family. I love being down here. I love seeing our family fish. I love seeing them drift. But how, how much longer do we have? Back in the day, you did this all year round. You caught fish in the spring, there's fish in the fall, and there's fish in the summer. But nowadays, it's only this one time a year where we get a really good fish run. And it's really sad because this fish run is so small, there's not going to be enough fish pulled out of this river to give every tribal member one fish. So we do the best that we can to make sure that we share the fish that we do get with people who might not get the ability to come down here and catch it themselves. My grandpa thought he'd never see the day where he'd catch less than 50 fish when he went fishing. Now we come out here with three teams and we're lucky to catch seven fish. But the reality of it is that our people need to be fed. You know, these salmon are so important to everything that we've come to understand as Yurok people that without these salmon, our way of life is impossible. Being a Yurok person, the river is our, our lifeblood. It's just as important as the air we breathe. The Klamath Basin is really big. It stretches from Southern Oregon down into Northern California, then goes out into the Pacific Ocean. It's really diverse as far as the physical aspects of it, and also the biological aspects of it. Historically, this was the third largest salmon producing river on the West Coast. There's been significant declines in all anadromous fisheries to a point where some fish have been extirpated from this river system. There's probably a number of reasons why things have changed so drastically, but one of the main reasons is those dams that were put in and basically cut the watershed in half and took away 400 miles of anadromous spawning habitat. These dams have such a big effect on our lives. And when you're younger, it feels like people are talking about or like a monster or something at the head of the river. And they're not used for irrigation. They make a small percentage of what Pacific Power and Berkshire Energy's profit is. Where a river should be naturally fluctuating up and down, these dams are regulating the water flow towards one kind of stagnant flow. So it allows algae all along the bottom of the river to pop up and grow and just flourish. At times, the Klamath River and the, and the reservoirs behind the Klamath dams can be thousands of times higher than the threshold that is recommended for humans to be in. So the water is toxic, extremely toxic. And then that water is in turn released down the Klamath River. State of California says that you're not supposed to drink it, you're not supposed to swim in it. If you let your animals drink it, they possibly die. You come up with sores. It's just become a part of our norm, which it shouldn't be. And it's, uh, it's sad to see. Mm, it's disgusting. For like the next generations to come, my kids or my kids' kids, to be able to swim and fish and not worry. 
Another very serious impact that we believe dams are responsible for is some fish disease issues that we have in, in the river. One fish disease in particular that we're, we're really concerned about is called Ceratonova shasta. We call it sea shasta. It's deadly to juveniles. 90% of the fish sampled have this disease. Another disease aspect that is exacerbated by dams is, is a fish disease that we study here in the lower river called ick. It's a parasite that attacks fish gills. Dams warm the water unnaturally, and so warm water can lead to delays in migration here on the lower river, and we can get congregations of fish. And congregations lead to stressed out adult Chinook salmon, and stressed fish are susceptible to diseases. Ick is responsible for the 2002 Klamath River fish kill where we lost over 60,000 adult Chinook salmon as they were returning upstream here. The largest salmon die-off in United States history happened right here on the Klamath River. Oh, the saddest part of my life. Um, so we believe the fish is our relative. So we're here to take care of them like they take care of us. Every year there's this fear that builds up in us, right? That we're gonna see those fish you know, floating down the river, dead and stinky again. And that hurts so much. That's basically what started uh, Klamath Justice Coalition and us getting together to start this campaign to undam the Klamath. We've worked really hard for a long time on this. And man, it feels like we're just right there at the finish line to get these dams taken out. We've dedicated years of our lives our young lives to give opportunity for the next generation to live on a healthy, dam-free river. Unfortunately, we've, we've had to raise our, our children in this way to, to have to fight for what we live for, for what we believe in. No, because we want to, it's because we have to, right? It's an obligation for us. Take care of this place and take care of us. And you're off we call it Naipui. So this has been one of the main staples for the Yurok people for our traditional diet for over thousands of years. So I'll come through and I'll defend and I'll pass it over to the master flayer. Women are very important in our culture. We build our people up. By 11, I was making my own gear and able to go out and pretty much feed myself, feed my family. My great-grandparents, they did a fish war here, fought the American government just for our fishing rights. And they actually had um, people with ride gear beating us natives down here for just for set nets. Every time you'd set net, guaranteed uh, they'd come through and try to pull it. And us locals had to fight them off. I'm glad they did because we want to be able to take you guys out and show you our way of life today. It's something that affects us every day because I can't just go to the grocery store and buy some salmon. I grew up with a gas station, like eating at a 7-Eleven every day. I don't think very many people could live like that. What we know is that the river is no longer providing for us like it should be. So it can no longer you know, provide subsistence of salmon for every family. So we have to find these different ways to provide for our people. And we want people to stand up. We want people to fight for their rights. We want people to be there. But in reality, if you don't have enough food for your family at home, how are you going to be able to go out and stand up for your rights halfway across the country or go to these protests? And how are you supposed to dedicate large portions of your time if you're worried about not having healthy food access in your home, you can't. And so it's a part of the system that's been constantly pressing our people to the point of normalization. If someone told us that we would be growing vegetables this time last year, or told me that this is what I would be doing or we would be doing as like a unit, I would have told them they're crazy. 
the education of it or the resource for the education wasn't there. And we're just trying to show people that how easy it is to actually grow their own food. Growing your food like this and growing your garden like this is like unheard of. And for us as fishermen to be out here making these types of moves, to find out what people like, to find out what people need, it's really kind of cutting edge for our community because it hasn't really been tried, hasn't really been done before. We stopped by a house today and they said they don't like cabbage. So <laughs> they're getting specific on us and, uh, and that's good. <laughs> We saw my today. What did they say? They said that the broccoli was so fresh, they cooked it four days, five days after we gave it to them, and it looked like they just pulled it out of the ground. <laughs> and a lot of people told us we couldn't do it. We weren't going to be able to get a garden in. We walked away from those people, and we found the people who believed in us, and they said, you know what? If we work really hard and we push forward, you guys will be feeding people by the end of the year. And it's... It's, it's, it's happening. These are hardworking families. You know, they take care of their kids and other people in their community. We're teaching families how to take care of yourself. Over hundreds of generations, our families have developed a resiliency that can't be beat that can't be destroyed. And no matter what happens, no matter what you take away, we're always gonna provide for our people. We're always gonna find a way to take care of our children. We're always gonna find a way to move forward. This river is our umbilical cord. What feeds us and what nurtures us. this reciprocal relationship that we have with it. I would do anything for this river, just like I would my own children. Like, I, I would die for it. I would do anything before I would give up on it. There was a generation before me who dedicated their whole lives just to make sure that these dams were removed. We must never forget that these salmon are more than just creatures of the water. There are people just like me and you. They wouldn't give up on us. We shouldn't give up on them. They have a chance to make the world right here. Do the right thing. Take the dams down. We're not gonna give up this fight to get these dams out of this river. Like, if this doesn't work, if, if this current iteration of dam removal doesn't work, we'll, we'll move on to the next. I imagine a world where we live in harmony with the river, and I see that. I, I see that possibility. So every aspect of my life has been built around this river, whether it be teaching the next generation these skills of organizing, or whether it be providing food for my family. Nothing says Northern California like cooking on a redwood skewer, an open flame. Sammy and these young folks, they're, they're really outspoken, and I, it makes me feel good that we've taught them how to, how to do that. They're all coming to that age, and they're all, they all know they got to stand up. They, you know, it's their time. You guys are doing the ancestral guard, the food sovereignty. Like, that's a slap in the face of all these systems. I think that's, that's the way it has to be. We have to be willing to put effort into things. Our survival depends on how we re-indigenize and live like we're meant to live again. After these dams are removed, all that power is going to be put directly into building these healthy opportunities for our people.
Now, let's talk to the filmmaker, shall we? My name is Shane Anderson. I'm a film director and producer, and I'm in Olympia, Washington. About a year and a half ago, I started a five-year documentary on the Klamath Dam removals, which will be the largest river restoration the world's ever seen. And kind of in the, in the process of, uh, of development and, and seeking out the stories, I, I got to meet some of the characters that we featured in Guardians of the River, Sammy Jensaw, and I just found him to be an extremely inspirational person and spent significant amount of time with him before we actually decided to film the piece to kind of understand their story. And we wanted to really make sure we were telling the story that helped their cause and kind of be an outlet for them, you know, providing our tools to amplify their voice. I think just first and foremost is kind of being conscious of extractive storytelling and not coming into a community and not just the tribe, but any community when you're a filmmaker being sensitive to you know, not exploit their story for your purpose, you know. So I just really wanted to make sure that everybody involved was comfortable and that they were kind of involved during the process too. I think just being open-minded, being aware that you're in someone else's space, it's a very powerful medium. So use that power carefully and to the best of your abilities to provide content that your subjects will be happy with. From my understanding, just a lot of trial and error, and I and we were all shocked at how how well the garden did, um, and just how beautiful the vegetables were. And I know they have plans now to expand. It was such a success this year, and they were able to grow so much food and deliver it, hand deliver it to their community, and people loved it. I talked to Sammy; they were going to do another garden upriver, and kind of spent the fall building garden boxes in Crescent City, uh, kind of tribal community housing. So there's kind of urban gardens they're doing too. So the, the garden program is really expanding and it's just really incredible to, you know, and it's not just, they're not just doing it um, to constantly supply food, but they're doing it to teach the community how to grow their own food essentially as well. Well, the Yurok tribe has an incredible science team. Um, you know, and, and it's it's really unique, and the Kruk tribe. Um, so they've been really at the forefront of water quality testing, bringing that to the mainstream. So that's kind of some of this content I'm gonna be shooting this year. I'm gonna be going out with the scientists and doing the water quality and looking for the fish disease stuff with these tribal biology uh, groups. Basically everything was like, when we were filming, I should, you know, the, the, the narrative, was kind of changing and evolving and I had to be a little fluid with it because over the summer, the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission uh, acronym called FERC, uh, basically kind of threw a curveball in the whole dam removal process. So people thought that after this 20 year effort that it, that it wasn't gonna happen. And it was really kind of a somber atmosphere when we were filming. And I actually had uh, addressed some of that in, in my initial rough cut a little bit more um, but then in, in October, um, the, uh, there was a big kind of press release in Pacific Core. The dam owners basically said, we're going to move forward with this. We're going to take the dams out. And um, that was a really important turning point. So I had to kind of change a couple of the scenes in the film um, because things were changing as we were editing. Uh, but, but for the better, I'm glad I had to do that so yeah we're on track for dam removal in 2023 for complete uh, removal of these four large dams and it's going to open up 400 miles of river and improve the water quality and i'm going to be documenting it the whole time so this is going to be a, a a long longest journey of my film career to make this feature film so we're documenting the whole dam removal process for the next two years leading up to it and then during it and then a little bit after it and um, just going to kind of follow the whole journey, kind of tell the backstory, the backstory of how it um, came to be and how this, uh, you know, what seemed like an impossible feat 20 years ago became reality. And it's just a story of tenacity and, and just determination to you know, to, to bring the river back uh, to its former health and to support these communities for generations to come. 
Thanks so much for watching Seeker Indie's screening of Guardians of the River. It's stories like these that can inspire more discoveries, more adventures, and new ideas that may one day help save our planet. Keep coming back to see what else we have in store and the amazing stories we continue to highlight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Seeker.